All right, now for some of you, this is not your first introduction to NASA, and we are excited to have you back. So Lauren, Yuri, and Becky, tell us about your previous experiences here at NASA and what your job was at the time of selection. All right, well, I'm, off. I'm Lauren Edgar, and I am so excited and honored to be here today. My NASA experience actually dates back to my days as a NASA intern working at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. I spent two summers there, and then I participated in a number of NASA programs throughout college and grad school. Uh, more recently, I've been working at the US Geological Survey and helping to contribute to the exploration of the moon and Mars. Uh, so I've participated in NASA missions. I've uh, contributed to some of the geology training and testing. I've worked on the Mars Exploration Rover mission, Curiosity Mars Rover mission, working with JPL, and most recently, the Artemis III science team. And through these experiences, I have had the chance to see the amazing team that makes this all possible. And I just wanted to say I am so excited to be officially part of the NASA family and can't wait to be serving in this role along with all of my new classmates here. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Yuri Kubo. Super excited to be here and, and, and deeply honored to be a part of, of this class as well as the NASA family. Um, actually, uh, much like Lauren, I, I started here back in, in college. Um, I was a co-op uh, here, right here at the Johnson Space Center, actually. Uh, feels a lot like a kind of a homecoming, a really nice homecoming to come back. So I, I spent seven tours here at Johnson Space Center across both the engineering side of the house as well as the, uh, the flight operations side. Um, so I, I got a, a good taste of what it was to be a, a part of this incredible community of, of dedicated people. Um, fast forward to more recently, um, I was, uh, at the time of selection, I was a, a senior vice president of engineering at a company called Electric Hydrogen, uh, where I was uh, working with a, an amazing team trying to um, build electrolyzers that split ox or water into oxygen and hydrogen uh, to, to make uh, energy for a lot of key industries. So, thanks. Hi, I'm Becky Lawler, and it is just an awesome honor to be able to be up here today. Uh, my previous work with NASA was actually through interagency work that NASA does. When I was in the Navy, I flew as a guest research pilot on Operation Icebridge in the, NOAA, in the NASA P3 out of uh, Northern Greenland. I was giving away the next part. Um, my second time working with NASA when it was, I was working for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, sometimes referred to as NOAA, and I was a NOAA commissioned officer and I got to work with NASA on certifying uh, instruments that were really important in forecasting hurricanes during hurricane seasons for the NOAA hurricane hunters. And at the time of my selection, I was United Airlines flight test captain and technical pilot, which is a test pilot, and I'm so excited to use all those experiences and everything to be a part of this incredible team and play my role um, in our endeavors as a class. Okay, and now two of you come to us with a medical background. So Anna and Mel, tell us a little bit about your background and what you're excited for in the future of space medicine. Hi, I'm Anna Menon, and I was here at NASA's Johnson Space Center. I worked as a biomedical flight controller, and in that role, our job was to support the medical hardware and software on the International Space Station and help keep the astronauts healthy and safe from mission control. I am so thrilled to be back here with the NASA family. And you know, as I reflect on the future of space medicine, I think it's really bright. We are born into 1G, and so when you go into 0G, so many things change. As more and more people venture into space and we seek to go further than ever before, we have this awesome opportunity to learn a tremendous amount to help support those astronauts and those people that are flying in those adventures and help keep them healthy and safe. So it's an exciting time to be here and I couldn't be more thrilled and honored. My name is Imelda Muller. I sometimes go by Mel. And previously, I was an undersea medical officer with the Navy. And that experience gave me the opportunity to work with multidisciplinary teams in experimental and saturation diving. And I developed a passion for learning about the way the body adapts in extreme environments. And this led me to pursue medical residency training in anesthesia, 
where I deepen that understanding of, of how our body responds when it's under stress. I'm incredibly excited to be here alongside this team and to build on that foundation um, with the greater NASA community because, as Anna alluded to, with upcoming exploration missions, we are pushing the boundaries of human performance. And the lessons that we learn, the knowledge that we gain, all of these things are going to help us to excel not just in space, but in areas of human health here on Earth. The future of space medicine is now, and I'm incredibly honored to be here with this team. We have six test pilots in the group. The following questions are for a few of you, our jet pilots, Adam, Cameron, and Aaron. One of the highlights of my career was being the person, along with April Jordan, to let you know that you had been selected to join the astronaut corps. The responses were varied, and they were awesome. <laughs> so two questions. What was it like to get that call, and how do you think your flight test background will help you in your astronaut training? Hello, everyone. A shower. Uh, at first, I was just in disbelief. I had to take the first exit and finish the conversation uh, in a parking lot just to make sure I was hearing you right, Joe. Uh, but then came the excitement and just extreme gratitude for the opportunity to join this amazing team. And I was happy to finish the drive home and share that news with my wife and kids who are, who are here with us today. Uh, as far as experience in flight test, uh, as test pilots, we don't do anything on our own. We work with amazing teams of uh, engineers and maintenance professionals to plan, uh, simulate, and then execute complex and sometimes risky missions in aircraft to collect data and accomplish a mission, all while assessing risk and making smart calls as a team to, to do that as safely as possible. And I'm happy to try to bring some of that experience to do the same thing with the NASA team and learn from everyone at Johnson Space Center how to apply those lessons to human spaceflight. Hey everybody, I'm uh, Cameron Jones. I got the call from Joe in April about two months ago. Uh, and about two months and three days ago, I just finished a cross-country move from California to DC. So we were uh, <laughs> sitting on the floor of our new empty house, my wife, uh, my daughter, and I with no furniture. Uh, and the call came through. And I don't think my one-year-old knew exactly what was going on, but I must have had a pretty big smile on my face because she let out a perfectly timed, gleeful scream. Uh, that went through both sides of the call and got good laughs uh, from the other end of the phone as well. So uh, also really excited to be here, but that brings up my test pilot skill that I'm going to focus on, which is adaptability and resiliency. So maybe it's a move cross country, maybe it's a dynamic situation uh, up in an airplane, but I think that'll transport into this domain. Hello, I'm Aaron Overcash, call sign Loft. And when I got the call, I was about a week away from joining my next squadron on deployment. So I had my sea bags packed, ready to go meet the aircraft carrier. I had just finished flight, uh, flight training for the day. And my spouse and I were on the couch. We get a call from an unknown number, and we both look at each other. And then we were like throwing blankets and pillows. Oh my gosh, where's the remote? Turn the TV off. And we had like one last pause of a moment, making eye contact, knowing that this phone call could change our lives, and it did. Um, then the way Joe phrased his part of the conversation, he effectively said, do you still want the job? And the first words that I said on the phone were, no way. I mean, I mean, yes, of course, but like, no way. Um, and then not specific to my flight test, but just being in the Navy, I think any sailor would tell you we spend a lot of time stuck in a hot metal box or sometimes a cold metal box in the middle of the ocean. And uh, when you share that space with 5,000 people, there's no such thing as privacy or personal space. And you really have to get to know your, your people that you work with very well, both good and bad. You have to learn how to set clear boundaries and respect each other, not just to survive, but really thrive as a team. And so that's some uh, perspective I hope to bring to our astronaut candidate group. We're all very glad that no way meant yes. So <laughs> thanks for that. Now let's talk to our two helicopter pilots, Ben and Kate. What are you most excited about for your upcoming training? 
Yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm Ben Bailey, and uh, the next two years of uh, ASCAN training are, are exciting. Uh, you know, language training, flight training, spacewalk training, robotics, all of that, each one of those would be uh, very exciting in its own right. I would be excited to do any one of those individually, and to look and combine all of those over the next two years is extremely exciting. So I, I can't pick out a single uh, one alone, um, but all of them together are, are just fantastic. And more than that, I'm really excited uh, that the next two years will be spent with the other nine here on stage with me. Uh, I'm really excited to see everybody's strengths uh, as we tackle those challenges together. Good morning. I'm Catherine Spees, and Ben knows this, but when you're flying a helicopter and you're sitting in the cockpit, there is a lot going on. Uh, the rotors are vibrating your seat, and you can see the flicker of the blades over the top of your field of view, and you're reading the instruments, and you've got voices coming into the radio and your helmet, and all of these inputs are the language of your aircraft. And it's the same language that connects us across squadrons and other disciplines and even countries, and uh, this is what makes big things happen. And I think in the next two years of astronaut candidate training, the thing that I'm super pumped about is learning the language of human spaceflight. <laughs> not that we're not having fun already, but how about a little more fun? So y'all have worked around the world and trained for various career or personal events. So why don't you share with us something that maybe not everyone would know about you? OK, I'll start. Um, I spent my first year as a naval officer in the Navy's world-class athlete program. So I was effectively a professional rugby player. I lived and trained full-time at the Olympic Training Center with the USA rugby team. Uh, I'll go next. Um, some of you might be familiar with a sport called Ultimate Frisbee. Um, what some of you might not know is it became a professional sport, actually, in 2012. Um, and uh, I had the honor of representing Indianapolis, Indiana, um, as a professional athlete for the uh, inaugural year of that sport. All right. Well, those who know me well, including my nine new best friends on the stage here, uh, know that I love to do handstands everywhere that I go. I uh, grew up doing gymnastics and I've always loved the outdoors, so it kind of evolved from climb a mountain, do a handstand at the top, uh, but it seems to have followed me everywhere around the world, on tops of mountains, on top of glaciers, the bottom of the Grand Canyon, uh, pretty much everywhere that I've gone, except on this stage today. <laughs> Well, Lauren, that is great news. Uh, I, my New Year's resolution this year was to learn to walk on my hands. I have made zero progress. <laughs> but maybe before the end of December, I can get a few pointers. Thank you. <laughs> 